think I'm recording. Let's see. Press that. Can hear. This is uh, K103 versus K102. How noisy can you get? Huh? We'll try to keep the camera centered this time. So we stop hearing those march noises. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, the arrangement that Boozmont, him, and a couple others who spoke up, we made a combined chat, and we are doing our best to minimize troop loss here. Uh, so we have Timotheus leading in the east turret. Wonder why it doesn't let people add that last three hundred thousand. That's just weird. It's just weird. Um. Anyway, we're gonna we set this up so that uh, K one hundred two would occupy east and south turrets. Timbo leading in the south. We've got Lord Crix in the not the north. I'm in the east. Duh. Uh, they got Lord Crix from Sky in the North Turret and Federal One from FNX in the West Turret and Booze there. Uh, he's a Stronghold 40 in the center. And they're sending minimum marches. Like 50,000 or something. That's 12,500. For T10, that'll get you what you need uh, in order to score minimum points. Uh, there's some T10, 20,000. I'll bring up the chart here in a little bit. But it looks like everybody is just uh, sending their minimum march for points. I'll see if I can pull up that chart that I made the other day. <laughs> uh, I think it's on this one. No, it's not on this one. Where am I? Oh, it is on here. It is on here. Here's your troop chart. Well, that's the image. Actually, I can delete that. This is your chart right here. So. T10, 12,500. Uh, I would I would recommend sending more than that. I don't know. This is just a straight calculation for 300,000 troops. Assumes all troops in March are lost in one way or another. I think that's how you get your points. Um, is both injured and dead. <laughs> but you should be able to revive all of them because you get 45,000. So really the threshold is, is here at uh, Tier 4 where you start to get into the area where you're losing more than, than you can revive after the event or during the Sharpen Your Swords event. So that's what we're doing on both sides. If you didn't join Crusade Alliance to get into a turret, then you can just teleport over uh, don't have to leave your alliance which is kind of what we're trying to do this right here uh, just highlighting it because I'm spotting it uh, one thing about your estate is its anchor point you take up four tiles okay you see this you take up four tiles when you teleport, or you know, whenever you, wherever your state is. But the coordinates for it are actually this northernmost tile. Okay, so when you teleport into a kingdom, that puts your estate technically inside the Black Forest and can be attacked. So, and we have a sort of a standard arrangement write up that we're doing with each uh, and each kingdom that we meet in KVK because we're just trying to minimize troop loss. 
it just seems so senseless. The benefits from having the crown don't seem to be, you know, worth it when you're losing millions of troops and it takes you weeks and months to actually do that at regular speed. So anyway, Svem here is actually in the Black Forest. This will happen along this line, which I'll call the Southwest Line, and this line, which I'll call the Southeast Line. So it's not the same when you're up here on these this side of the Black Forest. You can actually straddle, and you're technically not vulnerable because your actual coordinates is you know, in outside the Black Forest. So that's that. Anyway, I need to keep an eye on Pinnacle Chat here because uh, treating everyone to ice cream. Novu is super cool, by the way. So anyway, a couple things I learned this last week. Uh, I know, or you know, am in contact with a couple of people um, that didn't get a matchup in KVK this weekend. Kingdom 106 was one of those, and it was. It's a bit of a challenge because you have to. Um, Pay attention to the Citadel, and you have to check its uh, challenge status or its protected status. And I guess it could come up at like any time, <laughs> so you have to like set watch. You know, like okay, you're responsible for checking it during these hours, and if it is becomes, you know, challengeable, then you have to go occupy it. Um, Let's see, let's pull up Discord. Kadi from K25 actually. Um, where is she at? I've met some seriously cool people in this game. Anyway, uh, Kingdom 25 has no opponent for two times in a row for KVK. If towers are occupied by foreign alliances, they will shoot at the Citadel and cause damage. Do not occupy those turrets unless it's the same alliance that is in the Citadel. Okay, they'll cause damage. So, you know, you can occupy them and you'll get points, but you'll lose troops, so it just seems senseless. After KVK, there are packages and titles. Buffs also work, except for the one that benefits benefits new trained soldiers that are lost in KVK. So that's one of the reasons why you don't want to lose uh, troops in a KVK where you don't have a matchup. It's just called a crown battle. It's supposed to be an internal battle, I suppose. So um, that's that. Pay attention. If you don't get matched in KVK, uh, you just have to keep an eye on your thing. Apparently, if you don't get to it, it's important to check the protected status of the Citadel. For us, there was no announcement via the system email when it would start. She said that she suspects it's the same time as the last KVKs, but not sure. Um, the Citadel must be occupied for eight hours without interruption, then the KVK ends. If there is an interruption, the timer starts again, the whole thing, for 24 hours. Seems so stupid to me. So you park somebody in there for eight hours. <laughs> Seems so stupid. Anyway, I've had the back and forth with STDIP Tamir which is one of your uh, STVIP 001, STVIP 001. I recommend that everybody find that one. It's STVIP 001, 002, from what I know. Anyway, I've just been feeding nonstop feedback to this VIP customer support. It's such a senseless game. 
and you always get the response. Sorry to make you feel that, Tim. You didn't make me feel nothing. I will forward your opinions to our related team. You can use Peace Shield to protect your castle. Yes, the Peace Shield at 2,000 gold per day. How is it is a Stronghold 21 supposed to keep up with that without paying? If you're not buying packs, then you're not getting enough gold to keep a Peace Shield up 24 hours a day, nonstop. And <clears throat> this is in reference to my account that I have in K124 where the supreme asshole of the game, K-Dog, is going around just kicking over sandcastles with everybody. And uh, apparently he didn't get his way in KVK yesterday, so he goes on the rampage again, you know? He's just a moron. He's, he's an idiot. He's not intelligent. You know, he's stupid. That's all there is to it. He's poisonous and stupid. That's basically all there is to it. And if I was in that kingdom, I would have quit a long time ago. I wouldn't continue to play the game. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, back to our KVK. This is going to go on for about an hour and a half, and then we're going to let them be. Uh, we've been doing it for 40 minutes now. Uh need to check that. Yeah, we got a few people joining us so that they can go uh, sit in a tower or turret. <clears throat> anyway, that's that. So, I uh, have really gotten burned out on the game lately. Um, this is not a fun game to play. It's, I don't know. If you didn't lose so many troops, I think that's the single biggest factor in this game. But you end up losing 500,000, a million, two million troops. And it, you just end up having to spend money to replace them. And if you want them replaced by the time the next KVK comes up, then you've got um, a lot of training to do and you have to spend money in order to replace those troops. So, let's see if we have any injured yet. None. I haven't checked any battle reports. Uh, some people are getting some losses. Not too much, though. But that, that right there, they're all sending 12,500. So that's probably T9 right there. Yeah, that's T9. So they they certainly are looking at the chart. Sorry about that. I should do that. <laughs> that's annoying. I wait to talk till I st stop hearing those noises. So that's a quick message for me. I'm not going to make it a real long, drawn-out deal. Uh, I did want to say hello to a few people. Um, Lady A and Rohit from uh, Kingdom 106. It has been a pleasure working with you over the past, past few weeks. Um, Denver Dabin from K102, Marina. Oh, and I spoke to a guy. I don't know what kingdom he's from. Uh, his name's Lucifer. He's a stronghold for Let's see if I can figure out what kingdom he's from. I cannot... <laughs> Um, I can't figure out what kingdom he's from. I want to say he's from like 156 or something like that. I, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but anyway, I regularly get people that talk to me. 
they just convo me on uh, Discord or in game. And if they do in game, uh, these messages that you get in private, um, they will disappear after a little while. Sometimes they don't last long enough for you to log in. Like if you're not logged in overnight, sometimes they won't be there when you check in. So I always uh, give them my Discord contact. That way those um, the conversation, the messages persist. It's interesting. They're showing... Why is he scouting? <laughs> There's no reason to send any. You could just blindly send a minimum march. And I shared this with... Uh, let's pull this up and see. I'll show you our arrangement, our document. See if we can find this. Um, let's go to Kingdom Chat and see if it's still in there. And maybe we have. Uh, what? Where's the? There's the link. Copy. Go. So this is our. This is our agreement. K-103 versus K-102. And this is what we've laid out. We arranged who would win the prep stage, what kind of marches you would send, who would occupy which turrets. The only thing we didn't put in here was that we're not going to occupy the turrets for more than 90 minutes. We included this chart in here, tier 1 through 6, tier 7 through 12 here, and how many troops you need to send to get minimum points. And then everything's translated and, of course, linked. You can start at the top here and go to each individual you know, translation. Let's go. I missed out. Where's the Korean? <laughs> There's a Korean one here. There's French. There's Korean. But there's no link at the top. So... Maybe I'm missing something. That's the Chinese one. Chinese traditional. So I have a Korean <laughs> translation, but no link to it from the top. So it's funny how these, you know how making documents goes. It's like you try to make this big project and then you think you got it all finished and boom. You finalized it and the first thing you find something wrong. So I published this the other day. And what I had accidentally done was translated the entire document to German. And so I translated it back from German to English because there's no undo button when you translate something in Microsoft Word. You can't just hit Control Z or undo. It won't work. It just translates it, and that's it. So anyway, when I translated it back to English, it changed turret to storm. <laughs> so now I have 15... You know, well, only 10, actually. 10 translations, and every one of them, I have to go through and make sure that it actually translates from English to the appropriate language. But we have as many languages in, in there as necessary. So, uh, in the end, both kingdom walk with the crown. That was our goal. We approached K-103 uh, as soon as the pinnacle challenge came up, you know, as soon as this was available. Then we can go over there and look. And we saw that it was uh, FNX with Boozmont, Alex, and the crew. Uh, which I'm not sure where Alex is. Alex is a very strong player. He's at uh, 3 billion. Uh, it's interesting that you know most people at this level would hide this, right? But I mean, shoot. At this point, what do you do? You know, uh, what you can do when you're in Kingdom. This is interesting. You can look at their uh, <coughs> their Titan damage, which is interesting. 
uh, like Timbo needs to talk to Booze and say, hey, bro, you need to get to the point where you're doubling that damage. You need to be at 300 mil. This right here is... It's just interesting to look at. That's all. The rest of these guys... Uh, Lord Crix, what is he anyway? I think he's a 37. Oh, he's a 39. So, uh, without even trying, he's at 86. Okay. My usual is around 106, about 10 to 11 mil per hit. So, um, and I've tinkered with the composition to see if it would get any better, but um, that's about it. Uh, there's really not much going on here. We're going to do this for another 45 minutes max, and then we're going to call it quits. We're going to walk away. So, um, that's that. I want to encourage everybody out there. To try to do this. Unless you just like losing troops. They need to seriously do a couple of things in this game. They need to reduce the number of troops you lose in a battle. Period. That's all there is to it. The second thing they need to do is they need to create zones in this game. They need to create zones that are policed. Potentially by NPC. If you want to live in those zones, that's fine. And in that zone, you would be safe from attack. Okay? And then what you get in those zones is perhaps something that's not, that's a little less uh, valuable. So let's just say as an example, silver might not be available in abundance in that safe zone. Okay? But you could take a risk and gain the reward, you know, the risk versus reward thing of living in a non-safe area or a lawless area where there are a lot of riches, but you have the risk of being attacked. You are vulnerable to attack, you know. That way, assholes like K-Dog can go live in that area, and they can attack as much as they want. You know, but this whole idea that a stronghold 40 can attack a stronghold 20, wipe out all of his troops, you know, put, fill the hospital, fill the sanctuary, and then whatever else is left just dies, you know. I don't know if you realize this, but a stronghold 20's hospitals is only going to be able to hold about 110,000 troops, you know, at level 20. I think it's 120,000 troops or something like that. Okay, so, and your sanctuary capacity, I think, is uh, something like 400,000. But not everything is going to go to the sanctuary, from what I understand. There's a chance for death, okay? Battlefield treatment plays into it. And, um, you know, there's a few other things in that death mechanic that play into it. But... Uh, it's an estate attack, so it's safer. But this asshole, K Dog, he didn't get his crown yesterday. And so he runs around just willy nilly, attacks a whole bunch of different people. He attacked my account in that kingdom. He has no idea that it's me. Well, I'm in some small alliance. They don't bother anybody. They don't even say two words in kingdom chat. Well, until after he went on the rampage yesterday. This guy is a true piece of shit. I mean, I've seen some of the words that he's said to other people. And I'll put it this way. If I met him in real life, he would not be a friend of mine. I know that for a fact. And the words that he says anywhere, you know, they're just toxic. You know, he's, he's a piece of trash. That's all there is to it. So the fact that I'm even mentioning him on this is probably, you know, that feeds into his narcissism. So... But I'm just offering a, a suggestion to the game. They need like lawless. 
I play this game called EVE Online. The way they handle it there is they have a high security space, which is relatively safe. You can still get killed, but <clears throat> when people attack you, um, the police come in, lock you down, and blow you up. That's it. You lose the ship. You know, you're not losing everything that you... You're not losing multiple ships, you know, like, which is what happens in this game. You know, you're losing the ship that you're in when you do the, the illegal attack. But they have low security space, which has, you know, some freedom to attack people at will. But there's still gate guns or sentry guns on the gates. And then there's zero security. And... The, there, it's a free-for-all. You consent to full-time combat in, in null security space. That's what they need in this game. You know what I mean? To make it so that players that want to do Farmville, that want to do... They want to play the game in peace without having to tend to it 24-7. Or to put a peace shield up. But this, this these game owners will not do anything that cuts into their profits. That's why I encourage you. If it's if you're in a kingdom where it's it's you've got a tyrant, you've got an asshole like Kato, just leave, just quit. You know, I would recommend not playing a game at all. Uh, most certainly, don't put any money into it. That's for sure. So, um, okay, there we go. Are we full? So that's enough for my rant. I wonder why I'm only getting 3.5 million. Um, where's Thor? I wish Thor was here. I wanted him to join crew and take over the Easter at like halfway through. Which we're about, well, we're a little beyond halfway. But anyway, that's that. Thanks for watching. Good luck out there in real life. Uh, screw this game. Don't play it. Uh, go make your reviews known. Uh, it's a pay-to-win game. The only people that matter are those that, that pay. The only people that have any say are whales, and even then they get ignored. Um, if they double charge your credit card for something, and you challenge it, like let's say you go to them and you say, hey, you double charged me here, they will fight you on it. They will ignore it. They won't say anything to you. <clears throat> and then... Your only recourse is to go to your bank, right? If they deny you a refund request, the next thing you can do is do a chargeback. Well, a chargeback is essentially up to your bank, okay? Or if you have an Apple thing, whatever, Google Play, they can do a chargeback, okay? If you do a chargeback, that can actually cause you problems in the long run, okay? So... I would be careful with chargebacks. You can charge back and you can get all your money, but this game company will hold your account hostage and they won't let you purchase anything until that's repaid. So they get you both coming and going. So Fun Plus, King's Group, they are not on the up and up. They're not above board. They are very underhanded and dirty about what they do. Uh, and then they always give you this, sorry to make you feel that way. I've forwarded your comment to the appropriate team. That's their standard response. They don't ever actually respond to your issue. So I would highly recommend any new players that are deciding to go play this game, don't do it. Just don't do it. And if you do, don't pay any money. So uh, I will go on a long... But for going forward, that will be my statement for every video that I do for this game. I will say, don't join this game and do not pay money, period. So, um, go find another game. Go find a subscription-based game. You know, five, ten bucks a month, and you can play to your heart's content. How much or how little, however you want. Uh, I recommend going and playing EVE Online. It's a PC-based game, but there is a mobile-based game called Eve Echoes, I think. It's quite a bit different than the Eve Online PC version, but it's still the same concepts. But that one there is a mobile game. 
so CCP, Crowd Control Productions, who owns that, they've gotten into the same thing. These companies, uh, they want to do microtransactions. If they do micro microtransactions, they make money hand over fist. Okay, they make millions instead of being, you know, subscription based. The problem with the microtransaction thing is people don't stick around on those games. They might play those games for a year or two. All right. Eve Online, I've played that since 2008. So we're going on 15 years. So Eve Online is the breadwinner and the money maker for that company. So these microtransaction games won't last, but they you know, they're always looking for a dirty underhanded way to make profit. Anyway, have a good day. Uh enjoy yourself, go out, touch some grass, get away from this game, quit staring at your phone. <laughs> enjoy your life and take care. Thanks.